Thus far, we have seen examples of adding by a value and multiplying by a value in while loops. We're going to examine the two other cases quickly, which are what happens when you divide by a value and what happens when you subtract by a value. So in this case, we're going to create our table just as we did in the past, where we keep track of the number of iterations and the value of i. i is initialized in this problem to be n, and we're running until i is less than 1. So we, after one iteration, we divide by 4. So we take that value and divide by 4. After two iterations, we divide by 4 again. And as our intuition showed us in the last problem, maybe writing this as an exponential is a good idea. We've multiplied stuff together. After three iterations, I divide by 4 again, and I get n divided by 4 cubed. This is looking pretty promising. So after k iterations, that's looking a heck of a lot like n divided by 4 to the k. And again, this should be unsurprising. Continued multiplication, which is all division really is, it's multiplying by a fraction, is going to give us something that looks exponential. Exponentiation is continued multiplication. Thus, what are we going to do? We are going to try to solve when does n divided by 4 to the k equal our stopping condition, and in this case our stopping condition is 1. We want to try to solve that for k, so let's multiply both sides by 4 to the k, and we get n equals 4 to the k. Take a log base 4 of both sides, log base 4 of n is equal to k, and now that k is again approximately my number of iterations of the while loop, therefore I can express t of n in my convenient way, which is that each run takes constant time, and it runs approximately log base 4 of n times. Therefore, t of n is in theta of log of n. This should again be not that surprising, because dividing and multiplication are inverse operations of each other, so we might expect them to take approximately the same amount of time. So, this is hopefully not so bad. Let's look at our last example which is going to be subtracting, and this is going to be presumably similar to our addition example, because subtracting is adding by a negative, so this should look a hell of a lot like our addition example. So we make a table, just like we've done in all the previous problems. We create a table that keeps track of the number of iterations and the value of i. Before we start, i started at n, and then after we finish one iteration, we have subtracted 5 from i according to our code. And then after two iterations, we subtract 5 again, so that's n minus 10. After three iterations, we subtract 5 again. Therefore, after k iterations, that's looking a heck of a lot like n minus 5 times k. So we need to find out when does that equal the stopping condition. So this stops when that expression that I have for i is equal to the stopping condition. Again, this is just an approximation because we don't want to keep track of those fiddly details about the floors and adding one maybe because of the exact inequalities that show up. This is a very, very close approximation to the value of k. So this is n is equal to 5k, divide by 5, and we get k equals n divided by 5. So t of n, again, every iteration takes constant time in this case, so we have that that's c times k, which is n divided by 5, thus t of n is in theta of n. And again, this should be unsurprising because the code here looks very, very, very similar to the code that we saw when we analyzed the addition. Subtracting and addition are inverse operations of each other, so we expect that they do roughly the same thing when involved in the code.